So welcome for this session. So now we are doing Brock's revision. That's revision. Now Brock's revision is all about just a reminder of what I've been doing in the other topics. So in today's session, the, we want us to cover the cost of capital. I hope you remember what is cost of capital. And you see that the cost of capital is the average cost of the investors or the required rate of return of the investor who have provided the fund in the company. And then for the cost of capital, we'll be computing both the WACC and the WOMCC. So that's just the normal concept. Eh? So I want us to do some questions. So in this case, we we'll just be doing the questions. So before the revision, what we're supposed to do is first of all, to revise on the topic, what we did during our study videos. Eh? So now these are Brock's revision. So for Brock's revision, we'll just be doing the questions directly. So I want us to start with November 2017, question 3B. So open with me, November 2017, November 2017. Question 3B. November 2017. Question 3B. And we are told that. We are told that. Ray Properties Limited is planning to build a small a business mall. Is planning to build. So if they are planning to build, eh, let me take you back to what we call WCC and WMCC. We say that WCC is the average cost of the existing fund. WMCC is the average cost of the new funds to be raised. Now, if you're planning to build a mall, so that means you need to raise new capital. So in this case, we'll be computing WMCC. The project will cost 180 million. The farm current optimal cost uh, capital structure is as follows. So we have the ordinary share capital. Then we have 10% uh, debt. Uh, then we have retained profits. So in short, the company has both the debt and the equity. There is no preference share. Additional information. The firm will issue a new 15% debenture at shillings 120, each with a flotation cost of 10 shillings per unit. The power value of each debenture is 100. New ordinary shares will be issued at the current market price of 30 shillings with a flotation cost of 5 shillings per share. The most re uh, recent dividend uh, paid by the company was 5 shillings per share, that's DO. The dividend is expected to grow at the rate of 5% per annum in perpetuity. So that's the G, the growth rate. And the firm expects to retain 18 million to finance this new investment. And then the corporate tax rate is 30% required. The amount to be raised from the equity capital if the capital structure is to remain unchanged. Remember, see that for the WMCC, we use the optimal capital structure. The percentage does not change. And how do we get that uh, percentage of the weight? Weight, we have both the equity and then we have the debt. We want first of all to determine the weight. Now for the equity, now let's go to the optimal capital structure. For the equity, we have ordinary share capital, which is 480, plus there is retained earnings, an amount of 96. And that one will get an amount of 586. Then we have the debt. We have the 10% debt, an amount of 384. Uh, 384. And the total we have is 960. So we need to convert that one into weights. So how do we get into weights? For equity, we take 586 over the total. So 586, you will divide by 960, and you get 0 0.61. That means the debt will be 0. Uh, three nine good so that's the weight now in this case the question was the amount to be raised from the equity capital if the capital structure remain unchanged so now the amount raised from equity amount from equity equity presents 61 percent that is 0 0.61 and then the amount we need to raise to uh, construct this uh, business more is an amount of 180. So how much will we have to get from the equity? So it's 0.61, you multiply by 180, and you get an amount of 109.8 million. That's what we need to get uh, from the equity. Number two, the number of ordinary share that the company should issue to raise the desired external equity capital. External equity capital. Now external equity capital is the ordinary share. So we want to determine the number of shares. So how do you determine the number of shares? Now, the amount you get from the equity, total amount from equity, it's an amount of 109.8 million. But equity is made up of the ordinary share and the retained earnings. How much would be the expected retained earnings? So let's go to note number five. 
Number five, we are told that the firm expects to retain 18 million to finance this investment. A retained earning of this investment will be having an amount of 18. So that means how much will we raise from the issue of ordinary share? So ordinary share capital will be uh, the balance. So answer you minus 18 and you'll get an amount of 91.8. So this amount we need to raise from the issue of ordinary share. Therefore, how many shares will you have to issue? To get the number of shares, to get the number of shares, you get the amount to raise, you divide by the issue price. Issue price. So how much do we have to raise from the issue of ordinary share? It's 91.8 million, you divide by the issue price. Now let's go to note number two. New ordinary share will be issued at a current market price of that each with a flotation cost of five. Now flotation cost is a cost involved in issuing the share. So we shall issue at that, eh? but we will not fetch that eh? because five will be as part of the cost. You minus five, you raise the flotation cost. So that means how many shares will we have uh, to issue? So you divide by 25 and you'll have to issue 3.672 million uh, shares. Those are the number of new shares to be issued to finance that project. Then number three, number three, the firm weighted marginal cost of capital, WMCC. So how do we get WMCC? Is the weight of equity cost of equity, weight of the debt cost of the debt, one minus T. So in this case there is no preference here. So we already have the weights, but we don't have the cost of equity. So how do we get the cost of equity? Now, for the cost of equity, well, first of all, you have to determine. First of all, you have to determine how many WMCC do we have to compute. First of all, you can compute the breakpoint. Compute the breakpoint, and how do we get the breakpoint? Now, breakpoint you compute when you are determining WMCC. And you see that breakpoint, you take the amount trace, amount trace, you divide by the weight or the proportion. And in this case, for breakpoint, you only compute for the amount that uh, for the uh, for the element that you have the specific amount. In this case, the only specific amount we have is the retained earnings. And for retained earnings, we expect an amount of retained earnings of 18 million. So you take 18 million, you divide by the weight. Retained earnings is part of the equity. Equity present 0 0.61, 0 0.61. And they say that breakpoint is a point whereby a given source of capital is exhausted and the investor opts to go for the next expensive source of capital. So it's 29.5 million. So the breakpoint we have is 29.5. I'll come to explain that. Eh? So therefore, let's get the cost of equity. We see that the cost of equity, when computing WMCC, we compute both the cost of retained earnings and the cost of ordinary share. When you are computing WACC, we don't consider the cost of retained earnings. So how do we get the cost of retained earnings? How do we get the cost of ordinary share? It's DO1 plus G, PO plus the growth rate. For ordinary share, it's DO1 plus G, PO minus rotation, you add the growth rate. How much is DO? DO you already given in note number three. The most recent dividend paid by the company was five shillings. It's five, one plus the growth rate. Number four, the dividend is expected to grow at the rate of 5% per annum to perpetuity, 0.05. PO is the market price per share, note number two. The current market price per share is 30, then you add the growth rate, 0.05. You do the same for the ordinary share. DO is five, one plus the growth rate, 0.05. PO, the market price is 30, but for ordinary share, we have to incur the flotation cost and the flotation cost per share will be 5. Then you add the growth rate, 0 0.05. And then what you get, you multiply by 100, so we'll have 5, you multiply by 1.05, you divide by that, then you add 0 0.05, that one will be 22.5%. What about the ordinary shares? So it's 5 times 1.05, divide by 25, you add 0 0.05, and here you'll get 26%. You already have the cost of equity. Now let's, uh, yeah, the cost of equity. Let's get the cost of the debt. We said that for the cost of the debt, we have redeemable and irredeemable debt. 
Now, in this case, we are not given about the maturity period. So, therefore, this one is an irredeemable debt. And in case of irredeemable debt, how do we get the cost of the debt? Is the interest divided by the value of the debt. In case there is any fluctuation cost you uh, deduct, then 1 minus T. And remember, I said that interest is always based on the par value. Now, let's go to note number one. The firm will issue a new 15% debenture. So, the interest is 15% of the par value. The firm will issue a new 15% debenture at 120. So, 120 is the value of the debt. Uh -huh. With a flotation cost of 10, you minus the flotation cost of 10. The par value of each debenture is 100. So, therefore, the interest is 15% of the par value, which is 100. Then you multiply by 1 minus t. Note number 6, the tax rate is 30%, so 1 minus t, it will be 0 0.7. So, that's 15. Uh, you divide by 110, you multiply that by 0.7, and you'll get 9.5%. So, that's the cost of the debt. So, now, reason here. How do we get WMCC, or how many WMCC will have to compute? You say that to get WMCC, WMCC is the weight of equity, cost of equity, weight of the debt, cost of the debt, 1 minus T. How many WMCC do you have to compute? Now this is what you do. It will be guided by the breakpoint. For the breakpoint, you only have for the retained earnings. So therefore, between 0 to 29.5, then above 29.5, remember the maximum amount we need is 180. So we compute 2 WMCC. Now, let me explain something here. What's changing here is the, uh, for the breakpoint, you see for the retained earnings, 29.5. So that means between 0 to 29.5, we shall use the cost of retained earnings. This is cheaper. The cost of retained earnings is 22.5%. Anything under the equity, above 29.5, that's when you go to the next expensive source of equity, which is expensive, which is the ordinary share at 26%. If I just repeat again, we say that breakpoint is a point whereby a given source of capital is exhausted and the investor opts to go to the next expensive source of capital. Now, in this case, we have the specific amount for the retained earnings. So you compute the breakpoint for the retained earnings. So that means the amount we can get from the retained earnings, the maximum we can have is 29.5. So that means under the equity, anything between 0 to 29.5, we can afford through the retained earnings. So therefore, use the cost of retained earnings, which is cheaper at 22.5. If it exists that under the equity, we have to issue new shares, which is expensive, and the cost of owner share will be 26%. So therefore, weight of equity, the weight of equity does not change. Here is the weight of equity. You take 0 0.61, 0 0.61, you multiply by the cost of equity. We have said that anything below 29.5, we use the cost of retained earnings, which is cheaper at 22.5. Once it exists 25.5, at 29.5, we go to the next expensive, which is 26. So in this case, the cost of equity above this, now we use 26 for the ordinary share. Plus, weight of the debt. The weight of the debt is 0 0.39. 0 0.39. Now, for the cost of the debt does not change. The cost of the debt we have is 1, which is 9.5. 9.5, 9.5. Then we say that you don't tax because when you're computing the cost of the debt here, you have already taken into consideration 1 minus T. So how much do you get as a WMCC? 0.61, you multiply by 22.5, you add 0.39, you multiply by 9.5, you get 17.43%. 0 0.61, you multiply by 26.39, uh, you multiply by 9.5, you'll get 19.57%. So that's how you compute WMCC. WMCC.